second and goal. We're going to pass out of this. And Boyd gets his first touchdown. It's rookie to rookie. Boyd to Ridley for our first score of the second season. Welcome, welcome. We are back in the Panthers franchise. We are in week one. And before we get going with the matchup, we are going to be taking care of the scouting, getting our scouts in order, taking a look at the draft class for the first time, and just, you know, getting a feel for what this next season is going to bring us. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our scouts here and we're going to fire everybody. Yep, sorry. And now that all the scouts have been fired, sounds oh, so horrible to say. But, you know, it's just the way the game is. We're going to take a look at the regional breakdown and see what we're going to be working with this year. So first things first, we'll look at national level just to get a feel for the entire class as a whole. We got a couple of top five quarterbacks, but we have our own top five quarterback in Deion Boyd. So I'm not concerned at all with worrying about the quarterbacks. We're good. There are a handful of running backs in this draft. Now, we do have a couple, right? We have Brooks. We brought in Judge. We have Miles Sanders. Even Kirkland could be something down the line. So this isn't really a big area of concern for us. Wide receiver, that's up to interpretation. I don't really know what our situation will look like later on down the line because we have a few young guys that could end up blossoming into something good. We also have a few older veterans that we're, we're gonna work our way through, but we're gonna have them on the roster for now. So I'm not too sure if I wanna really dive too much into wide receivers again. I felt like we hit pretty good on wide receivers this past draft. Tight end, this one is probably the most of a need more than wide receiver running back because we know Ridley has talent, but we don't know what that injury is gonna do. Is he gonna be an injury concern? We don't know yet. So I would like to, to put a little bit more effort with the tight ends than I did last year. Um, and just in case something does pop up, we'll see. It might not make sense based off of the regional play. Offensive line is something we may have to start considering a little bit because we do have some areas that we have to look at going forward. Guards is always a hit or miss with the draft. There's a few there and a few there. So really not a lot. Hopefully a good handful of them end up in the same region so we can try and do a scout on them. Otherwise we could always use our focus scouting and our private workouts to try and find a few of these guys. And over at right tackle though, there does seem to be a fair amount of them. So I'm hoping that we can do some type of scouting at the tackle position and maybe have a secondary of the interior and maybe that'll work out in our favor. Defensive line is something we definitely need to focus on because regardless if we're playing a 3-4 or if we decide to switch to a 4-3, we don't have a lot of answers there. Okay, we have a few uh, stopgap players and a few guys that are on the tail end of their career. And then we have one huge bright spot in Derek Brown. But outside of him, we really don't have a lot of answers right now. So looking at the defensive line, at left end, Dylan Ford is the top guy. He's a top five pick. There's another round one here in Kevin Parker. A few round one guys, which I like to see. And a lot of them at right end. So this right now is telling me that we might end up having to do defensive end potentially as a national scout to try and get as many of these guys unlocked as possible. And then D-tackle, there is a lot of day three guys. And then a few guys rounding out the top. So we might have to try and fit some in there as well because we need we need answers all over the place, in my opinion. There is also a top five linebacker. You don't see that very often. And it doesn't, I, I don't know if this guy is going to be considered. He's like right in between both areas of height and weight for, I don't know if he's going to be a edge rusher or an off-ball linebacker. But either way, he's intriguing, Telvin Collins. Danny Russell as well, he's definitely an edge rusher. So there's gonna be quite a few of these guys that are all gonna be defensive ends in our system or outside linebackers if we stick with the 3-4. So I think I wanna do a heavy set here in the defensive front here in the front seven, for sure. I think we're good at off-ball linebackers unless we find somebody that just really jumps off the board to us. And then at corner, I'm really happy with the direction we're at at corner right now. I want to see how some of these guys develop before I would stick too much stock in here, but I will probably end up putting them at some of the region just to make sure we're, we're covering our bases in that front. One thing I did not do well enough last year that I need to this year is we need to take a look at safeties. Free safety, strong safety, and see what, our, what we're looking like. Because I signed Isaiah Simmons who again, another stopgap player. He's not gonna be somebody that we can rely on for the long haul here in this franchise. 
and there appears to be quite a few at free safety and a good chunk at strong safety where we could really dial in and see what we can get out of these guys. All right, so this is the look that we have this year for our scouts. I tried to match up the secondary expertise with what else was good in the region. So I decided to actually put my tier three here in the central, which sounds a little weird, but they had a, a really good chunk of safeties and wide receivers. So by putting the tier three there, I'm hoping we get the most bang for our buck out of two of those different positions. And then the defensive ends are really what we're concerned about the most. So I figured let's just do the tier two at national with the defensive ends. We'll do the, the D tackle as the one star along with another safety in the Northeast along with corners and then tight end and wide receiver in the West. So hopefully this ends up turning out in our favor, but we'll see how it goes as the season progresses. Before we get into things with the weekly strategy and talking about that, let's go over the Lions here. I went right past them. So we know Jared Goff. They got Jameer Gibbs, who's up to an 86 now. David Montgomery right behind him at an 85. Not a lot has changed. Amonra St. Brown. They Okay, well, Keenan Allen is now here. So he comes over from Chicago, making his trip around the NFC North, apparently. Deontay Johnson, our former receiver, is still here in Detroit. As you guys, if you guys remember last season during the, 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 the simming, we decided to trade Deontay Johnson. He, he didn't want to re-sign with us at all. He was on the last year of his deal and we were a team that was in a tough spot. So he goes to Detroit, who we know is pretty much in a, the middle of a, of a pretty big buildup for playoff run and contention. So I think it was a good fit for them. Jamison Williams and a couple of rookies behind him, Sam Laporta. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of change as of yet with how these teams are sort of played out. Um, they all look to be pretty much the same as they were when we started the season la or started the franchise, I should say. Yeah, nothing really has changed here. But the Lions are the same team that we know them to be, and we know that they like to pass the ball. I don't want to go defend deep pass, but I will go defend medium pass. That's been my bread and butter. And then on the offensive side of the ball, I don't think we want to throw it, but we don't really want to run it either. Actually, maybe we will run it. We're going to start off the season trying to run the ball. Give Deion Boyd a little bit of a, of a cushion. And now here for our five focus players, I have to decide who I want to focus. I'm going to obviously focus Boyd and battle. Uh, I think Deron Overton is a good option. And then it has, and then Jacquez Green. And then there is Antoine Mobley. Do I want him or somebody different? Let's take a look. I'm actually going to change it to Dalvin Ridley. I want to give him a shot to be the tight end. I just don't know if he's going to be able to hang in there because of his injury, but we're going to give him a shot. Do as a focus player this year. So these are the five guys that we are going to leave as focus players for the entirety of the season. And what I'm going to do is I want to come back here at the end of this. I want you guys to remember this. And we are going to see what their overalls are at the end of the season and see how just how much we can get them to improve by doing the mini games every single week. Of course, I will not be making you guys sit through the mini games. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do them now. And then we're going to get to the Lions game. All right. It is just about time for kickoff. We are in week one, of course, and we got the whites on today. I noticed that the Panthers like to run their white uniforms a lot more than their home uniforms. So... Figured we could try that out a little bit more. Although I do like the black uniform, so chances are we're still going to be seeing a lot of them. As the Lions come out of the field, it's going to be a tough matchup to open things up because they are a very good team. 85 overall team altogether. And we have a lot of unproven talent on this team. A lot of young players. First drive out, we did not get anything done. We ended up having to go three and out. A couple of a rough plays for Boyd, just missed passes. And now Goff and company come onto the field, hand off to Gibbs, and immediately he finds a nice crease off the left side for a gain of eight. I did make some adjustments to the sliders. I moved the accelerated clock up to 12 instead of 11. Um, I dropped it from all Madden to all pro right now because I'm not sure what is going to happen after the latest patch. And I also decreased holding by a few, brought it down to 52, and I brought wide receiver catching back up to 40. It was at 35. And we'll see what that does, but right now the Lions making some plays, moving down the field. They close in on midfield. 
So I'm still trying to do some testing. It definitely seems to have affected some things, though. And handoff to Gibbs again. He'll get a short gain of two. Three carries, ten yards for him. Goff with the snap. Looks underneath to Laporta. He's got him. And Laporta working his way to the sideline. Oh, no, that wasn't. That was Brock Wright. My apologies. Apparently forgot what his number was. He's number 87, though. But Wright on the catch. Works his way for the first down. Detroit moving here very quickly. Oh, we send Heat. But they draw up a, a beautiful underneath route to Amonra St. Brown right underneath or right behind that blitz makes an easy conversion for them and they are just chugging along here down down inside the 35 Laporta in motion play action to Gibbs Goff under pressure Clowney tracks him down but he can't make the tackle you've got to be kidding me what just happened oh my god I I can't believe Clowney misses the sack and then we give up. I, I mean, maybe everybody thought the sack was just it there. It was done. Because it seemed like nobody reacted to Laporta just screaming across the field. And that's going to be an easy touchdown for the Lions. I mean, hats off to Goff for not allowing Clowney to bring him down. But my God, what a horrible way to open this game. All right, Boyd. We need you to do something here, man. Team did not start out very good. Okay, Ridley is in motion. Going to be a handoff to Brooks. Slips off the first. He's got to crease himself. He'll get it out to the 40. Beautiful first run. Brooks, I'm hoping we can see something really special from him this year. I think he, he has a, a chance to be a very good running back. Underneath the Leggett. That time he does make the catch, and it's going to be a first down. We did not get a single positive play on the opening drive so far. This drive, two positive plays in two attempts. That has us across midfield ourselves as Sanders is in motion. Oh, a little outside throw. Goes to Donovan Peoples-Jones. Happy to see that Boyd was able to shake off last drive. Ridley, once again in motion. We just saw this play. No, it's a different one. This time we're throwing out of it. Boyd, check down. And it's Ridley on the catch. Makes the play down to the 39. It's going to be third and one. As Alex Anzalone appears to be shaking up for Detroit. He is going to head to the locker room. Nice to see Ridley get involved. Good to see Boyd settling in a little bit. And off to Brooks. Oh, a beautiful cut right up the gut. And he is all the way inside the 20. Two carries, 37 yards. That cut there, the block by 50. Excellent execution all the way around. We got ourselves a shot here to tie things up inside the red zone. A lot of motion here. Sanders. The one in motion that time. And he's going to make this catch as well. Caught immediately. Mingo in motion now. Boyd going to check it off to Brooks. And Brooks with a full head of steam. Gets down to the three. It looked like he might get caught off guard a little bit short of the stick. But he ended up finding his footing and just springing forward. And now we really have a good setup here. First and goal. Hand off to Brooks. And Brooks stopped just short at the one. Second and goal. We're going to pass out of this. And Boyd gets his first touchdown. It's rookie to rookie. Boyd to Ridley for our first score of the second season. And we're going to tie things up early. Excellent way to bounce back after a very rough opening drive. I mean, Boyd looked out of out of whack. He just looked like he was lost, but settled down. Commands the offense down the field. 
and helps us tie things up. What, ju what just happened? I don't know what just happened. There's just a lot of booing, and now they're at the 40. Did we kick the ball out of the out of the play field of play? Gibbs takes up the middle for eight. Yeah, I know. I looked at my phone. Sue me, okay? Speaking of looking at my phone, I just saw a little you know, update about... Oh, there's another first down. Uh, what's going on in, you know, the south right now, the southeast, Florida, the Carolinas, Tennessee, you know, every, every area that's being affected, Georgia, um, just that whole area of the country. I, I hope everybody is doing okay. And obviously, um, very upsetting stuff that's going on with the hurricane and all the, the after effects of it. And um, yeah, I just hope you guys are all being safe down there if you're from that area. And I hope that things in the recovery process is, is as smooth as possible. As Goff fires it off to Monra St. Brown. And he's going to get another first down. And that's closing in on the end of the first. We should get maybe one more play. First and 10. Yep, one last play here. Play action rollout. Goff going to drop it off to Laporta. Keeps his feet in bounds. And nobody in the vicinity of him. He'll get another nine to close us out. Empty for Oh, never mind. Gibbs comes to the back. and Oh, look at that. A little motion in route to get him into space there in the flat. That was a nice little play design. Almost use it like a makeshift screen with the wide receivers in front. First and 10. And like a two tight end set. St. Brown in motion. And it's going to be a play action again. Goff going to dump it off to Brown. And he will only get a yard. Not a lot of room there. Second and nine. So far, the offenses are doing what they need to do. Goff with time. Over the middle. Completed again to Amonra St. Brown. Down to the four. And Gibbs. Nowhere to go. It's Tevin Wallace on the stop in the backfield. Well, not really in the backfield. It was like a gain of one. But he got back there, shut it down, and now Montgomery is going to check in. And Montgomery is going to get another yard down to the two. Third and goal for Detroit. And off Gibbs stuffed at the line. It's Thompson. Big time stop. Now do we force the field goal or is Detroit gonna do what Detroit does and try and go for two here or go for it here on fourth down? Yeah, they're gonna go for it. No shocker there. We know Dan Campbell loves to go for it every chance he gets. Goff. End zone wide open receiver. And look who it is. It's Deontay Johnson. Scoring the touchdown on fourth down to put Detroit back on top. All right, so we're back here on offense. We are getting outplayed right now by Detroit, but we're right there. We just got to keep the pedal to the metal on offense here as Brooks takes the handoff. Gets banged around a little bit by the lineman and cannot really find a decent lane. He'll end up getting just a couple. Ridley in motion. Oh, a little RPO to Mingo, who steps out of bounds. Oh, man, you got to keep your feet in bounds there, man. Might have had ourselves a first, but now we're sitting here at third and two. Hopefully we can convert. Okay, snap it. There we go. Boyd Shorts got Ridley. And another first down. First and 10 here for Carolina. Another quick throw underneath the Sanders at tight end, and he'll get himself involved. Why not? Gain of three. Boyd with the snap. Oh, and that. Oh, Brooks cannot stay in bounds. That could have been a good play. But a good open field tackle by the Lion. Defender there to knock him off of his balance, force him out of bounds. Third and eight here. This is going to be a tough go for Boyd. First third and long of his career. And he completes it to Ridley. Inside the 40 to the 37. Guys, Dalvin Ridley 
turning into a playmaker for us in this opening day. Four and a half to go in the first half. Brooks in the backfield. Play action to him. Boyd sends it underneath to Sanders, and he himself gets nine yards. So right now, it appears that Boyd likes to go to the tight ends. And so far, it's been working for us. Maybe I should have... Oh, who is that going to be on? Is that going to be on us? No. Encroachment on the defense. Or neutral zone infraction, sorry. On Makai Wingo. That is one thing I have been liking about this slider set that I got from Matt 10. I made a few adjustments just to the holding to because it was almost every play when I ran a, a test game. Um, and to wide receiver catching, but penalties are alive. And I don't know if that's a Madden 25 thing or if that's a slider thing, but I'm I'm here for it. You know, like I'm happy. As Brooks takes it again, nice gain of six. Plus, the running game seems to have some balance. You can have good plays, and you can have bad plays, you can have big plays. Um, I'm really liking this set. Now, will there need to be a few tweaks? Maybe over the next few weeks, because as I go through these games, I'll see little things, you know, that are, start to become consistent and become a pattern that I might not like. But overall, I haven't had too much to complain about outside of the quarterback accuracy, but I don't know if that's something that can be fixed in this year's game. I just don't. As it's a short run that's going to end up causing us a fourth down, I would like to see us go for it here, but I feel like we're going to end up taking the points. So we'll see. No, we are going to go for it. I love it. All right, fourth and one. 205, 204. We're going to get this off for a two-minute warning. We are. It's a pitch play to Brooks. And he's got the first down. Excellent play call there. Usually those pitch plays do not work well. I think it may have caught Detroit off guard a little bit. And Boyd right now commanding this offense very nicely for a rookie. For his first game, I might add. Peoples-Jones in motion. And Boyd over the middle, it's completed to Peoples-Jones. I don't know how he came down with it. I thought it was intercepted. But he ends up coming down at the one. Second and goal. And off to Brooks, and he just cannot get in that end zone. He's had a couple of tries. And he just cannot get the power forward or something. I don't know. And another one to Brooks, and that time he's in. Touchdown, Carolina. We will tie things up here, heading into the break. All right, so we have 42 seconds, and Deion Boyd might pull something crazy out. Oh, that's not it. Oh, my God. That was just not it. That, that was stupid. That was bad. And we have a holding penalty. Well, they're going to decline that, that's for sure. Oh, man. That, I thought we were going to go to the half with a tie. I thought things were good. And, uh, yeah, that was that was a very big rookie mistake. It's gone off over the middle. It's got it to Monra St. Brown. And now Detroit. And now Clowney's hurt. Oh, of course. All right. Well, this, this took a turn for the worse here. A few things, obviously. Well, we gave the ball back to them. Um, well, we got the ball back from them, I should say. Then we threw the interception, but before that... Oh, there we go. But before that, I found out that when I signed Riley Patterson as our kicker, I forgot to put him in as kickoff safety, which is your kickoff kicker. And um, that meant Adam Thielen has been our kickoff guy, which is why I kept getting penalties after scores. Oh, yeah, just leave it wide open. Don't even bother score, like covering them. We don't care. We want to play from behind. Well, Amandre St. Brown has done what he wanted to do today. Eight catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Of course, that touchdown coming on that last drive right at the end of the break, or before the break, due to the overthrown pass by Boyd that led to the interception. And now Detroit starts off as Gibbs working his way through traffic for seven yards. The run game has been good on both sides, I would say, today. Um, pass game as well. It has not been a very defensive game today so far. So I might have to make some adjustments there. We'll see. And nice play there. That was a really good play in the open field. Who's hurt now? Okay, it's Montgomery. Okay. Well, it sucks still, but I just... 
I was I was afraid it was our guy, and I was be like, dang man, I, I don't want to have any more injuries. We already got Clowney out. As a completion over the middle to Laporta. Gets Detroit a first down. Offset eye for Gibbs. Well, once again, Laporta in motion. They're gonna go that side, a little counter play as Gibbs tracked down after four. Not a lot of room there for him. Which is good. Second down. All right, let's see here. Can this defense make a play? Off back. Almost get there for the sack. Ooh, I don't know if I like that spot. That spot seems a little generous. But they'll give it to him third and or first and ten. And is that gonna be a encroachment? Or I mean yeah, neutral zone. Oh. Holy cow. Now this is starting to feel like an actual football game. There's a bunch of penalties that make you mad. So first and five for Detroit. Which I like that because now I feel like the penalty trait will actually start to matter more when it comes to signing and drafting players. You know, there's the, the trait where like discipline, undisciplined, normal. Now, like, if penalties are going to be a thing in this franchise series, I, I can't just go and draft anybody. I have to sort of make sure I'm finding guys that aren't going to cause us losses like that on a regular basis. As Goff underneath the right, and he turns up field and somehow outruns our 95-speed corner. So apparently Brock Wright has, like, 97 speed. Not quite sure how that works, but um, there we go, you know? I mean, he, he turned and burned on, on Tremont Battle there. First and 10, Allen in motion. Goff with time underneath St. Brown again and down inside to the two. This has been a tough outing for our defense. And we are about to give up another touchdown, it feels like. Oh my god, yeah, that was a dumb decision. Yeah, Wallace is like, what are you thinking, man? What are you thinking? You're not thinking. Try to dive over the top and there's no lineman in front of you? Second and goal. Well, that time he didn't have to do anything. He just had to walk right in. Untouched. <laughs> Detroit Lions now up by two scores. All right, well, we are now in a pretty big hole here. Is oh my god, he kept his footing after that? Are you kidding me? Brevin Jordan! That was an incredible I thought he was dead to rights in the backfield. And no, he wasn't. Wow, okay, that was awesome to see. Let's see if that can ignite something here. Mingo, dude! What is that? I mean, I think that was more the coding than it was the catching because he seemed to be, like, running in place as the ball hit him in the chest. But I still don't like to see it. Brooks in motion. And that time he catches it. There we go. And that'll bring us to third and three. I mean, we, we can't just punt this drive after watching what Brevin Jordan did on that play. You know, there's no way. Because now I'm going to have to show this drive even if we punt it because, I mean, that was too cool not to show and that's exactly what I'm... Or I'm going to show it because of that. I'm starting to get upset, guys. Yeah, I'd be booing, too. I'd be booing, too. That was, uh... That was not good. You know, after thinking about it. And, yeah, yeah, hit him back. Hit him back. All right, let's keep pushing him back here. Oh, that's a big drop back. There we go. Third and 13. Okay. Defense has a chance here to shut it down. We just hit, we need a good play. Come on now. Third and 13. Oh, you better be careful there, 58. Or 98, sorry. Going short. That was a horrible decision for Detroit, and I am all for it. Nelson on the stop, and we will finally force a Detroit Lions punt. Boyd takes a snap, looking over the middle, finds a completion, 
to Mingo. And that was a, a big completion, too. We needed something big on offense. Boyd having a, a sort of a tough day, but it is his first game. We have to keep that in mind. His first game. So, you know, things might be a little rocky. As Mingo breaks off of the tackle, but there was just too many Lions in the vicinity. He'll be brought down after just a yard. Boyd, second and nine. Quick shot to Brooks. And Brooks down to the 40. Nice job motioning him out, getting the mismatch. We saw that play a few times in preseason. It worked very well for us. We've carried it into the regular season. Same type of situation there. Are we going for it again? No, this time Boyd's going to run with it. We know Boyd can move a little bit, and he'll get the first down. And off to Brooks. And I don't know what happened there. Second and eight. And off Brooks, and he... Wow. Um, that dude just bodied him. What the hell was that? Well, now that's third and 11. So happy we ran it on that second and long. On um, Boyd. Oh, yeah. Let's start. Okay. That was never going to work. Well, we are going to at least try to get some points out of this one. It's up. And it is good. Patterson brings us back within 11. So we had two Detroit punts and a punt of our own. So we are now here with 6.09 left in this game. Still down by 11. Boyd almost throw. Oh my gosh, man. You got to calm down. He just almost threw a pick six. Luckily, it was Kirby Joseph, and he dropped it. Go figure. Yeah, that was a cheap shot. I don't like him. I think he's a little bit dirty. If you don't agree, I'm sorry. Boyd underneath, and short pass to Mingo. Gain of four. Yeah, okay, guys. I'm a Vikings fan, okay? I have my certain feelings, but I do feel like Kirby Joseph sometimes takes some liberties with other players that most players have an un unwritten rule for. You know to protect everybody but you know that's that's just me third and six boyd rolling out over the middle completed and who is that that is people's jones with the catch finally get to see him involved our receivers have not been involved much at all today it's been pretty much the ridley show with a few appearances of brooks and sanders first and ten snap the ball thank you and speaking of Ridley, he catches that one for a short gain of two. Campbell on the coverage. Second down, four minutes to go. We need to start moving a little bit quicker here, though, guys. Just a little bit. That, yeah, that was bad. You threw it at the defender instead of the receiver. Okay, we're having a rough go of it. Boyd hasn't had too crazy of a, of a, of a day. We just don't want to make it any crazier. There we go. That was a good throw. Leggett made the catch. And we'll get the first down, but they did not get out, so the clock keeps running. Boyd. We got to stop checking it down, man. We got to start pushing this down the field a little bit. Get yards. We've, we've wasted three minutes on this drive. We're not even past midfield. Come on, Boyd. There it is. Deep shot. Connects. Peoples-Jones. No, that's Mingo. Down to the 23. And he's able to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Another handoff to Brooks. And he's got a good little nine-yard or eight-yard gain. They weren't expecting the run, so we use that to just get ourselves a little bit better positioning here for a couple of shots at the end zone, I would assume. No, we're going to hand it off again. That makes sense. We're down by 11 with two and a half to go. Why wouldn't we run the ball? Third and one. Boyd. End zone. Come. No, oh, he dropped it. Oh, People's Jones, man, you got to make that catch. Oh, man. Well, now we're going to take a field goal. Which does put us within eight points. 82 yards is what we need. Deion Boyd in his rookie first, first game as a rookie has the ability to drive us down the field 82 yards. Well, don't worry. We'll make it longer because we want to hold again. 
82 like you know 82 is really not that cool of a number right it's not but if you move it back to the nine now you can say 91 yard drive how much cooler is that first and 19 and where who were you throwing that to that that's what i would like to know who was that intended to because the receiver wasn't even on the screen but the the defender was Come on, man. What? I'm happy he dropped it. Boyd, you need to start pushing this ball down the field more. All right. Lot riding on this play here. And we throw it short of the sticks again. What are we doing? Fourth and 12. Man, we need a big play here. Boyd back, looking. Throws an interception. Well, there we go. Yeah, they just stop running at them 60 or 50. Let them score a touchdown just to put the icing on the cake for our loss. Appreciate it. After that game, we do have one injury. I'm assuming this is to Jadavian Clowney because that's the, yeah. So he's going to be out for two weeks with an abdominal tear, which means we might get a chance to see somebody like Johnson. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Maybe we find somebody in free agency to fill in, but I think we'll be fine with who we got on the team right now. But that was a tough opening week. Um, I think we saw some really good things out of some of our players, including Boyd. We also saw some struggles, which should, should be something we do expect. We are going to have struggles. Deion Boyd is going to have, I think, a very good career, but he's going to be a little on the iffy side until we can get some kinks worked out and, you know, help him, you know, perform at a more consistent level so a couple of things though about this series that i think i want to try to, to implement i want to hear your guys thoughts on this first thing i want to hear about i was thinking of doing something where i do uh, like sections of the season and call them like quarters or fifths of the season or whatever and um and just do the season in different chunks per video where we can try and expedite how long we're in a season and how far into the future we get. Um, I haven't made a decision yet because I wanted your guys' feedback on it. So what I was thinking is if we take like weeks one through five, weeks six through 10, and then weeks 11 through like 15, and then either the rest of the season or the season and playoffs, like the playoffs is always gonna be separate, right? I'm gonna always show the playoff game. So I'm not consuming, I'm not considering that. But like if we did, if I did one, one to two videos max for the first one through five weeks, another one to two videos max for six through 10, and then another one for like 11 through 15, and then one for the finish out the season. So like have like four to five weeks that we get through each episode, but I can only show a max of two games of that chunk, right? So I can decide to, like, if the matchups just aren't very good, I can just do one game and then sim the rest. Or if there's a couple of good matchups, we'll do two. We can throw in once in a while to do three in a single one. But the, the point I'm trying to make is I'm trying not to have it to where we have 12 to 15 videos per actual playing season. I want to be able to get... Like when we're at, at episode 40, I want us to be like years and years into the future, not two seasons in, if you know what I'm saying. So I just wanted to put that out there. See what you guys think about that. Let me know down below what you think. Also, this video, as you guys have noticed, came out a little bit later today. Um, I recently started using vidIQ instead of TubeBuddy and vidIQ swears I'm supposed to up, uh, upload later. So I don't know if it's gonna be a good or a bad thing yet. But I wanted to test the waters today, and we'll see how it goes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, if you could hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, turn on the bell notification, and I will see you guys next time.